Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host, Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC3 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. Linux Newslog is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. For those of you who have, thank you so much for supporting the show by subscribing. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the cool stories for this episode. Starting off over at ServerWatch, uh, CentOS 7 open source server OS arrives in style. The open source CentOS Linux 7 operating system is now officially available, providing a free alternative to server administrators that don't want or need a fully supported commercial enterprise Linux distribution. Short for Community Enterprise Operating System 7, CentOS 7 is a free community supported Linux distribution that is based on the recent Red Hat Enterprise Linux 7 operating system that became generally available uh, on June 10th. The CentOS project takes the RHEL open source code and packages it without any Red Hat trademarks, providing an operating system that is free to use and obtain. So uh, pretty interesting. Um, you know, again, this is really for anybody who who uh, needs a uh, a free alternative uh, to you know an operating system? Um, you know, Red Hat Enterprise Linux Seven obviously is always kind of uh, if you've got if you need the support, Red Hat Enterprise Linux Seven is kind of what you want to get. But um, you know, it's also recognized that. You know, you you may not need that. You may need to just get familiar with how, you know, Red Hat works, or even you just want to run CentOS seven, and so you don't necessarily need to pay for support. So it's nice to have that option. From uh, Lily Puting, Google launches a Chrome remote desktop for Linux. Google's remote desktop app, which lets you log in to one computer from another or from a smartphone or tablet, is now available for Linux. Chrome Remote Desktop for Linux is still in beta, but it now supports Ubuntu, Debian, and related Linux-based operating systems. That means you can use a Linux system to log into a Windows PC or a Windows PC or Android phone, for example, to log into your Linux desktop. This is pretty cool. I mean, there are multiple uh, software packages out there that do similar things, but uh, this is kind of a standout because it's really you know, has pretty good platform, multi-platform support. So, you know, good on them. I'm, I'm happy to see stuff like that happening for sure. From hostreview.com, Red Hat announces general availability of Red Hat Enterprise Linux OpenStack Platform 5. Um, the general availability of... OpenStack Platform 5 is the third enterprise release of Red Hat's OpenStack offering. It's designed to serve as a foundation for building OpenStack-powered clouds for advanced cloud users, telecommunications companies, internet service providers, and public cloud hosting providers. Um, what you get with that is an enterprise-class cloud platform built on top of RHEL, uh, co-engineered and integrated with Red Hat's OpenStack technologies, um, which allows IT organizations the ability to scale uh, and quickly meet customer demands without compromising on availability, security, or performance. So basically, what it basically allows you to do is you can have you know your relatively uh, spun down system, and then as you need, you can spin stuff up. And, uh, you know, it's very powerful. Uh, if you're Amazon cloud services or Amazon web services, I could totally see them getting into that sort of thing. Um, you know, should be pretty interesting nonetheless. From Tech Republic, how businesses are getting creative with Raspberry Pi. The $35 Linux board may have been launched to teach kids to code 
but the credit card size board is being used by businesses to build custom appliances. In fact, I'm considering using a Raspberry Pi to build a, 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 a custom, oh boy. I'm planning on uh, looking at using a Raspberry Pi board to build a somewhat custom appliance. Uh, the performance is not going to be nearly as good as I hope, but still pretty interesting nonetheless. Uh, companies as diverse as IBM and the Financial Times have used Pi to power ad hoc systems aimed at solving specific business challenges. At the FT and DevOps team, um, we're dra um, at the FT, the DevOps team were drowning in information sent by its automated infrastructure monitoring software. The uh, Nagios software running on its servers monitors variables ranging from disk and CPU usage to HTTP traffic and emails the team every time the state of one of these variables changes. That seems kind of excessive. Unfortunately, uh, the variables change so often, again, kind of excessive, that uh, the team were getting swamped by emails and were starting to ignore messages from Nagios. In need of a clearer way to spot when things were going wrong, the team turned to the Raspberry Pi. They used a Pi to power a system that changes the color of a strip of LEDs depending on the state of each server. Green, orange, yellow, red, and flashing red represent OK, unknown, warning, critical, or critical for more than 30 minutes, respectively. The system was made using a flexible strip of 60 RGB LEDs with an embedded microcontroller wired to a Pi, which runs various Python scripts monitoring notifications from Nagios. Um, there's a link that shows, uh, has a little more information on how they put the system together. It's stuff like that that is really cool. You know, Raspberry Pi has a, has a lot of potential if you're willing to, you know, invest a little bit of time and money. Um, if you're willing to invest a little bit of time and money into, uh, you know, getting together a little bit of a hardware solution along with a little bit of a software uh, solution as well. The next story that we have is also a Raspberry Pi story. This one is kind of cool. It's more on the fun side. Um, it's over at geekygadgets.com. Awesome Raspberry Pi Game Boy handheld console created. Yes, there is a video of a Raspberry Pi powered video game console that looks a lot like a Game Boy. I used to have a Game Boy back in the day. This looks, this is awesome. It's got a color screen and everything. Um, to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the iconic Game Boy handheld games systems launch, Adafruit has created their very own Raspberry Pi Game Boy using a 3D printed case and a $35 Model B mini PC. The casing for the project is available to download for the MakerBot Thingiverse and has been created to house all the components used to build the Raspberry Pi Game Boy. Check out the video. Uh, again, everything we've talked about linked up in the show notes. So if this is something you want to look at, definitely take a look. Pretty awesome. From uh, networkworld.com, Ubuntu Touch may be our last hope for a Linux tablet. What? That's right. Ubuntu Touch may be our last hope for a Linux tablet. Um, this is basically a blog post by, who's the author here? Brian Lunduk. Lunduk, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Sorry if, I, uh, if you're watching this and I totally bombed it. Um, he starts off, my daily computing experience is pretty tablet heavy, using air quotes here. Uh, my Nexus 7 is my constant companion. In fact, for the better part of the last year, I've done the vast majority of my actual work on this little Android tablet. But as much as I enjoy using Android, I am a Linux guy at heart. Um, and being a Linux guy, I would love to have a tablet powered by the technology I've come to love over the years. Namely, a shell I can run bash scripts in and the ability to run builds of some of my favorite desktop Linux apps, i.e. LibreOffice, Caligra, Inkscape, The GIMP, etc., etc., etc. In my efforts to achieve this goal, I picked up one of the newer Intel Bay Trail powered tablets. These little guys are powered by x86 processors, which means in theory you can install and run whatever x86 OS you want. 
Unfortunately, in practice, this means Windows 8.1 and a not terribly functional yet version of Fedora. So what's a guy like this supposed to do? Uh, well... Ubuntu Touch. I'm not going to go into all of the details of the article, but basically Canonical is saying that they expect Ubuntu Touch Powered Tablets to start shipping in the second half of the year. Um, when the author took Ubuntu Touch for a spin, it uh, he thought it had promise, and you know I've been kind of monitoring it to see what uh, you know what what uh, you know Canonical has in store, and hopefully it will be uh, you know great, but it's not there yet. So it's one of those things where we just kind of have to watch and see, you know, what happens. I'm hoping that Ubuntu Touch will be um, something that will allow, you know, tablet computing to take off, at least for Linux, because that's really the thing. You know, I mean, as much as I hate uh, promoting, you know, Apple or Steve Jobs or anything on a Linux or, or even Windows or Microsoft on a Linux centric show and open source centric show like uh, Linux Newslog, you know, uh, Steve Jobs, when he introduced the iPad, he kind of said it very succinctly. Or was it not? It wasn't when he, it was like at the All Things D conference or something where he said, we're, we're seeing a, a shift in usage. And, um, you know, Apple is really at the very beginning of that, uh, at least the very beginning of the well-executed version of that, where, you know, we're still going to have PCs, very much like they're still very much trucks, right? The PC is the truck. It's for doing the heavy duty stuff. It's for, you know, you need to encode video. You need to, you know, it, it's, it's for the, the heavy duty, heavy lifting. But uh, you don't drive a truck every day to back and forth to work. It doesn't make sense. You drive a little Econobox car back and forth to work. You use the, what's appropriate uh, for the for the job and tablets are wonderful for surfing the internet, doing email, uh, looking at pictures, you know, watching video, listening to music, that sort of thing. Perfect for that sort of thing. Um, you don't necessarily want to use a PC for that. You know, tablets are very personal. They're very much tied into you know you have your tablet and that is your tablet you know i i have a tablet there are other people in this house that have their own tablets we don't swap tablets very much like we don't swap phones it's a very personal device um you know and that's really where it's where it's heading is you know the, you don't have to have a, a pc necessarily for everything you're going to do you can get by with a tablet for 95 percent you know 99% of the people out there that use technology can get by with a tablet for over 90% of the things that they do on a daily basis. And so Linux very much needs to, if they, if Linux wants to succeed long-term, they, the platform as a whole very much needs to have very strong support for tablet. You know, it's not about you know the geeks and the engineers and the nerds and this is the geek engineer nerd operating system it's going to be more and more and more difficult to find hardware that you can run linux on if we if we as a community do not start supporting touch operating systems so i'm very curious to see how this evolves, how canonical. I mean, right now, Android is kind of it. And frankly, Android sucks. We need something much, much better than Android uh, for uh, a tablet-based operating system. I mean, Amazon has done a really good job with their Kindle Fire tablets, but really, I think Android has gone as far as it can uh, in the tablet space. And we really need to have you know, a proper Linux that fully supports a touch environment take over. So anyway, I'm getting off my soapbox, but that's my position on it. You know, tablets are the future for 95% plus of the things we do on a daily basis. Um, you know, you kind of pretty much star this, saw this if you watch Star Trek. Everybody had a tablet. That's what they did. They used tablets. That's what we're going to. Um, I do a lot of my stuff on a tablet. It's that simple. 
from techrepublic.com, 10 tips for a more user-friendly Linux desktop. This is uh, kind of a nice, lighthearted, uh, you know, 10 things that makes your life more usable in Linux. Um, definitely check it out. I thought it was a great read and thought I would share it with you guys. Um, you know, a lot of this is stuff that a lot of us are already doing, but some of it, if you're relatively new to Linux, you'll be like, oh, wow, that's totally cool. So definitely check it out. That will do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com or if you're watching this on YouTube, right below here. And uh, with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. See ya.